So here about the greatest common divisor, the GCD. It's similar to uh, some of the problems in uh, section 3.4 in our book. Uh, so I want to look at uh, an arbitrary integer greater than 1, just to be simple, just to avoid a certain degenerate case. Um, what are the possible values if I look at the greatest common divisor, the GCD, of that number and that number plus 3? So they're spaced 3 apart, and uh, what can happen with the GCD? And when do those those possibilities happen? So it's a good opportunity to just experiment with small numbers, find a pattern, and then step back and try to formalize it. Um, so if n is 2 and plus 3 is 5, the GCD of 2 and 5 is 1. They're relatively prime. 3 and 6 have common factor 3. 4 and 7 are relatively prime. 5 and 8 are relatively prime. 6 and 9 have common factor 3. 7 and 10 are relatively prime, 8 and 11 are relatively prime, 9 and 12 have common factor 3, uh, 10 and 13 are relatively prime, 11 and 14 are relatively prime. Okay, so it seems like we have a pattern that it goes, uh, there's a 1 there, but then 3, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1. <coughs> Excuse me, and in particular, the special cases are exactly when n is a multiple of 3. So it looks like we're going to break it into cases, n is a multiple of 3, n is not a multiple of 3. Okay, um, but even without breaking into cases, we should be able to say something that there is no interesting, really interesting original number that can ever that seems to appear on this list. It's all ones and threes. So the strategy I'm going to propose is first not worry about the cases um, and just say, is there something easy about n and n plus three and how they relate that shows you that these are the only two possibilities, and then break into cases and show that the possibilities happen where they, where we think they are based on this pattern. Okay. So more formally, we're going to say um, that uh, we want to show that the GCD of n and n plus 3, whatever that n is, uh, is either 1 or 3. Okay, so then we're going to go to the definition. We don't have a lot of sophistication about the GCD yet. We will. Um, and so we go to the definition as we just suppose that some integer L a uh, positive integer, I guess. Okay. Uh, divides n and l divides n plus 3. What can we say? So this is a great place to use one of the um, fundamental things about the GCD, is that if it divides one number and another, it divides the difference of those two numbers. And in fact, any linear combination. But uh, here, the key thing is that l is going to divide the difference, n plus 3 minus n. Oh, hey. In other words, L divides 3. Well, there's not a whole lot of divisors of 3. Just It's a small number. It happens to be prime, but just because it's small, it just means that L is 1 or 3. Okay. So any number that, um, that divides into both has to be 1 or 3, and therefore the greatest common divisor has got to be 1 or 3, okay? Uh, so let's see. If uh, 3 divides n, uh, it, so the, the, the only possibility that they couldn't wouldn't be relatively prime is if 3, well, let's say if 3 divides both, then the GCD will be, will be, ooh, there should be a comma, then the GCD will be 3, because it can't be anything bigger and if 3 divides both, then that's that greatest common divisor, okay? But this happens if n uh, is divisible by 3. Uh, let's say 3 divides n, okay? Since then, clearly, uh, 3 oops, is going to divide n plus 3 as well. Okay, if you really want to see that, we'd say, and if you want to be really pedantic about it, n equals 3k... And so 3 divides 3k plus 3. Why is that? Because um, 3k, since 3k plus 3 is 3 times the quantity k plus 1. Hopefully that's, yeah, we don't have to get that technical about it, but it's nice to see it as 
sum number we're interested in is explicitly 3 times explicitly something else, and they're both integers. That really takes it down to basics. Okay, so if 3 divides n, it'll divide n plus 3, and our GCD will be 3. Okay, so what about the other case? We've, we've already started to see why the cases come up. If 3 does not divide n, oh, well, then we're done. Um, if 3 doesn't divide n, it certainly doesn't divide both of them. both of n and n plus 3. And what was the only possibility? If 3 doesn't divide it, then 1 must be the GCD, because there isn't any, anything else based on that the fundamental argument in the first bullet point. Uh, so the GCD of n and n plus 3 is equal to 1. In other words, they're relatively prime. So this is a nice thing about GCDs. If you compare two numbers and kind of how they compare additively if their difference is a really fixed small number you can really nail down what happens with the gcd it's going to be a few possibilities and you'll be able to tell when it's when the numbers are not are kind of both kind of big and unrelated to each other in any obvious way that the gcd is a bit harder to figure out the great thing is we will have a really nice algorithm for all possible cases of the gcd but here we didn't have to do anything fancy um, we got it nailed down